Hello, welcome to my channel. Please give a like and subscribe. Anyway, on to the book review. Today I'm going to do a book review on World for Worlds. World for Worlds is about a man who lives in a small town near London. This will soon change though when a mysterious cylinder hits in their town. He, while inspecting it, a massive machine, taller than an office building, arrives with incinerating laser beams also known as heat rays in the book, which kill off most of humanity, as we see. This man has to survive challenges with food and water, trying to make sure that he can survive. He meets people on the way, artillerymen, priests, military, so on and so forth, but he has to lose his company of his wife, sending her to do a different town for her safety. With this, the man meets a priest, but they have to stay in the silence of a house, with a mysterious cylinder next door to them. With this silence, it turns them insane, making them start to fight. And with that fight, it ends with the man knocking out the priest and getting and hit the priest getting dragged by a metallic tentacle. Let's skip back further back just for a second. The man's brother is leaving London. He has a medic degree and doing his education there. He start, he leaves he leaves London in the hope of finding refuge in different countries. He ho he hopes to see a brighter future for England for the world. He leaves with two two women on a boat. Now let's get back forward ahead. The man with insanity starts to leave the house, knowing that he's technically murdered someone. He starts to scream, I'm the last man alive, knowing that these creatures, these machines, have killed off most of humanity and most of the English civilization. With this knowledge, he, act, he surrenders himself, singing, as I said, the la I am the last man alive, to figure out that there's a family in the door. They nurture him back to normal health, saving him from insanity. He starts to walk off again, seeing that the Martians have, dead, have died because of the bacteria and diseases that this world has brought it, that they have not experienced from this world. He also learns that the, uh, these creatures don't have any um, gender and they don't have the feeling of love because, of, because they don't understand, they don't have that sexual desire, that uh, type of love, which means they don't have mercy towards people. Because they don't have love. Without love, they don't have emotions. So on and so forth. With uh, with these creatures dead, he goes he goes back to London to see not a place full of work, not a place full of joy, not the capital of Britain, but a land of tramps. This is quite an interesting story. I find it really good. But before I go on to the review, I think I wanna I wanna discuss some points which I'd like to make. So the biology and the reason why the Martians came down. So the biology of these Martians, as I said, they don't have a gender. They self-reproduce, uh, meaning that they can double their society just within their pregnancy time. This is great for their working, so it makes them, makes them be able to get the super technology before we could ever imagine. Um, but this can also be a bad, as I'll talk about later. Um, as I said, they don't have love, meaning that their mercy is none and their grace is none. Uh, so let's talk about why the Martians came here. They came to Earth, so then they can... Sorry, they came to Earth because their planet was running out of materials. They needed some place to conquer and call their home, because their home was dying. Um... And there's three main ways where you lose materials and lose items which are vital to your civilization. Number one, climate and weather. The climate and weather of Mars is not the best for growing crops. Weather, dust storms. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So you can't, if you grow some plants, they're swooped away by the dust storms. And climate, it's very, very cold. Cold. By cold, I mean minus 81 Fahrenheit. Or if you're British, like me, 62 cells minus 62 celsius very very cold you can't even grow you can't even grow an apple tree there it'll just disappear instantly um and number three large amounts of people 
If you have large amounts of people, obviously your slight materials are going to disappear. And as I said, they can self-reproduce. If you can self-reproduce, you can d double your so society in such a short period of time. With this constant doubling of society of their civilization, that means they're going to lose materials very easily, meaning they have to come to Earth. This is interesting and leads to a moral question: Was what they what sorry was what they were doing right? Because they're just trying to do it for their survival, as we're trying to survive against the Martians. By we, I mean people in the humans in the book. Um, this brings the great question: Should they have done it or not? You have a question. Oh, why didn't they coexist with us? Well, then you've got cancelling double, doubling civilization with a slow-growing civilization. They would have wasted all of our materials anyway. You can't have two different species with two different biologies so coexist in such large amounts. This is, this is just mind-blowing because, uh, as I said, it brings that moral question: Should we let them do this? Is this right for them? Well, I'm going to let you think of that. I'm going to go to a review of the book. I thought this book was amazing. It talked about the science, um, about these aliens. It talked about why the aliens did it. And I think that was really good. Also, it talked about the insanity you would feel in this situation. And how weak we humans are by our own. And our, civ our English civilization is just so powerful to the world, but so minuscule to these machines it shows the advance in technology and it shows how uh, us humans alone are small compared to this wider larger universe and that we can adapt to diseases as shown and how we are strong united as a society a civilization a people and I think that is cool that that's been mentioned in the book. Um, it's a very good read. I recommend it to you. Uh, and keep reading books, I guess. Bye.